Hello everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we are uh, back with our informational tutorial series where we're going to be talking about gates and multi-gates. Um, these nodes can be incredibly helpful. Um, multi-gates more for the randomness if you, if you really wanted a random value to be produced. Um, or for example if you wanted to set up like a flashing color that could be another cool way of doing it outside of the material. Um, the gates are, I find, are more of a control of the flow of your code. Uh, and I'll I have a bit of a case example for this um, momentarily that you can see. Um, so multi-gates, we'll start with multi-gate, but basically a multi-gate, uh, it works a very similar to a sequence, but instead of follow, uh, flowing through each one of those pins, it will start with one and then you can control when it goes to the second one the third one the fourth one you can even have random output so for example if we just did like a i don't know a print string i'm not going to actually execute this but this is more just for the visual side of things if we said we had red uh blue uh and green you get the idea you could do every color it really doesn't matter but let's say you had some colors uh coming out of this Basically, when you, if we had like a, an uh, event here, like um, let's say call color, or if you just want it to be to a button press, when we hit this button, it's going to produce z like through the order, it's going to go zero, one, two, three, etc. If we click on loop, it will loop back around. So it's going to go zero, one, two, three, and then we're going to go zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. If there's no loop, it won't go past that output. So it's just going to go 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then that's it. So looping uh, is great for the continuation of the multi-gate, so it, for it to keep firing and actioning what's happening. The random side of things, so if we clicked random, um, you're going to get like 0, then 2, then 3, then 1, then 0, then 3, then 1, 2, 0. You get the idea. It's going to randomize whichever output it gives you first. But again, without the loop activated, it's not going to continue that process. It's just going to do all four pins and then it's done. If you decided that you wanted this to start on a particular pin, let's say we wanted it always to start on blue, we could always set that index to one uh, and have blue start first. So if we didn't have random, it would start one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, zero. Um, the minus one just negates everything and will always start at the very beginning of the multi gate. It's the, it's the equivalent of putting zero there, starting at zero. Because you can't have, I don't believe you can add, um, no, you can't add a minus one. So, um, yeah, minus one is the equivalent of starting at zero, essentially. If you had a randomized factor, but you also said, I want it to start on green. You could also have a extra uh, kind of event that you call that resets the whole thing. So what would that look like with a randomized loop? So if we started at two and we went to like one, three, zero, two, two, one, zero, you know, and carried on through that process of randomization, we could have an event that caused the reset and then it would always start on two. So the next one would be two. So um, yeah, multi-gates are great for just creating these randomized events, uh, but controlling the flow as well a little bit better without having, you know, a ton of branches and things like that, that would require you to um, just create a whole bunch of extra code. So multi-gates multi are great for that. It, it's like I say, it's like a controlled sequence. That's the best way to explain a multi-gate. But hopefully that gives you a bit more of an idea of how that would work. And, you know, maybe it'll give you some ideas of how you could use it in your projects. But that's multi-gate. Uh, the other one we've got is gate. I use this. I'm going to show you mine in a moment. But I use this for weapon systems. Primarily um, the kind of controlling the rate of fire. So... 
when I say rate of fire, I mean, you know, if I have uh, a semi-assault rifle that will shoot every 0 0.5 seconds, it's going to do this every 0 0.5 seconds. It's going to run through this uh, until I close it. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of mainly what I use gates for. But again, it's about controlling the flow through this gate. Hence why we have an open, close, and toggle. But let's have a look at my um, my version of a gate that I use for. So this is my uh, weapon shooting mechanic. Basically, you have to imagine there's obviously uh, an event called when I click my fire button that will shoot weapon. When I end that, I call shoot released or trigger release. You know, it, that, that would be a better one. Trigger activated, trigger released. But when we shoot, we always have to open the gate. We have to allow this gate to start running the code. So we use the sequence to open the gate. And then we use the second pin of the sequence to enter the gate. So we're saying we want to shoot. Now let's shoot. Now we've opened the gate. Let's shoot. And we go into another sequence. We hit a retriggerable delay. Now this is the rate of fire. So again, if we had a 0 0.5 or a 0 0.7 our, um, delay to start the next shot being sent off. It would loop back around to the gate, re-enter the gate. Um, we also come off of this, and this is what controls all of the firing mechanics. Uh, it takes care of spawning the projectiles, reducing the ammunition, playing sounds, all of that stuff. Um, so that's what happens when we go off of the one. But obviously for the gate, we then have to re-enter again to do this again. So we, again, we wait a 0 0.7 seconds, ready to fire again. Um, and it would control, uh, send the the rest of the code off to do the spawn the bullet, hit the target, etc. And then when we're done shooting, we would let go of the button and we close. So even if we come back through here, like let's say we have a late delay of, you know, I don't know, let's say we had three second bullets, and I hit that, and a second later I let go of the bullet. The next one's not going to fire off because we've closed the gate, so it's going to hit the enter. And it's going to stop because it can't refire. So it's only going to shoot and do all this code while I'm holding that button down. The minute I let go, even if the, the retriggerable delay ends and it goes to fire again, it won't fire again. So there's a phenomenal amount of control using this um, in your weapon system. I, I swear by it. I think it's brilliant for, for any form of a gun um, that you're planning on doing. I use it for my pistol, shotguns, uh, assault rifles, everything. Because I think I truly do believe that um, it's it's a wonderful uh, use of the node. But hopefully this gave you a bit more information on gates as well. Um, thank you so much, guys, for watching. As always, uh, we're on the road to 10k subscribers. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Uh, it really would mean a lot to me and uh, really help the channel to grow. But thank you so much as always, and I'll see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.